this whole thing was about, you know, like trying to give advice to people. Um, and I have a, I have a bit of a sort of like, um, I've been trying to learn how to teach properly. And, um, one of the few things that I've come to learn is that you, um, you have to sort of make things make sense for the student or whoever is going to go into this field of whatever it could be. I mean, game dev is so specialized, so, um, that you could probably not give the absolute best advice to everybody. So this all comes with a caveat like what we do and talk about today might not be applicable uh tomorrow and it might be very anecdotal in in a sense but hopefully you can draw some nice conclusions from this conversation that we're having um now to just tell you a little bit about how i started in the game industry and maybe that could resonate with uh you know some of you um i first started in um, you know, like making my own stuff, essentially at home, my mother's basement type of thing, right? So, you know, like I downloaded, uh, a, you know, 3D programs and so on. And back in that day, you know, they didn't really have an educational system with licenses and, and stuff like that. So a lot of these type of things you had to kind of do uh, the CDP red way of ascertaining hard no 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 okay. no, no, no that's that's not we had this that's no yeah, okay but in either case in either case you know it started from like something that i wanted to do like a lot and then it sort of grew from there right so hopefully you already have this um you know i want to do this um and with that comes a, a few caveats and, and so on and so forth like let's Let's um, let's take a look at the music industry and uh, people, you know, making music. A lot of people make music, but not a lot of people uh, do that enough, well, well enough, or get noticed enough to actually earn a living and like a pension and so on. And it's the same with any other industry. But right? easier with programmers. Probably easier with programmers, and that's uh, that's because uh, this is what I call uh, black box technology. And it's kind of like rooted into this sort of weird bureaucracy in programming where like, hey, I, I compile this piece of code and nobody can understand it because I have no comments, no source, no nothing. It's only my stuff. And hey, if you want an update, you better hire me. You better, you know. You okay, I think we're going too far away. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, but basically after I, uh, you know, studied a little bit, I went off to um you know various smaller uh studios um but you were studying yes i was studying but the thing with the studying here was that i learned a lot of um nonsense that was um you know uh, beside the point of what i was trying to do so like and that's why i brought up the specialization type of thing right so we try to learn from each other and uh, go to like uh, master sessions or, 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 or whatever. And the problem is that we are looking for ver something very niche and we are trying to become like the best at that. that that's how you think as an artist, right? Um, and the thing is like, if, if somebody has already created a tool around it and everybody has access to it, then it's not unique. It's like generic at that, at that level. So, um, and what teachers do is like, we try to uh, make it into a more uh, generic, like it can fit everybody, but it also means that it excludes these people that, um, you know, kind of want to do something very hyper-specific. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say that you want to be um, the best game developer in the world, right? Um, 10 years ago, that wouldn't be Poland. Mm -hmm. Right. But now you can definitely say like, yeah, I'm a Polish game dev. I'm the best in the world. You can say that. I mean, look at CDP, look at uh, Techland and uh, other companies and so on. And it's not just and it's not just the the money monetary value that they bring into the country, but also the game quality. It has fans all over the world. You know. Yeah. But when you're a mm, young person that just finish school, whatever it's study or whatnot, they are not going to start in CDP or... Oh, yeah, that is true. That is very true. And there is another problem to that that I feel like a lot of students um, had as an issue. But it's 
again, what, you know, what I've learned throughout the years might not be applicable now because you're be old. Well, not that, not just that, you know, like I cannot work like a 20 year old. It's just not possible. Right. And you guys or girls or it's or whatever um, might end up in the same situation where you see that, Hey, maybe, maybe thinking about how to solve the problem instead of going brute force, showing your muscles. Uh, this is Masakra. Yeah, she already introduced herself several times. Oh, okay. Um, what was the <laughs> what were we talking about? Masakra came in. Uh, but, uh, Kitty, you're interrupting. And this, uh, that a person that just finished studies cannot go. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, back, back in my day, in, you know, it was really frowned upon to, um, to work from home. You know, like uh, in the beginning, it was like, yeah, you, you know, like people can just send reports from from whatever, and that's it should be fine. But in game dev, it was really looked down upon, right? Mm -hmm. It was it has to, it had to be like an extreme situation for that to happen. Technically, we're in this extreme situation, everybody, right? Yeah. But the thing is, like, uh, companies have now been forced to realize that hey, we we have to work from home. We need to be able to set this up. So what you're saying is that it's easier for people right now to get a job because they don't have to relocate. You, yeah, exactly. Like you as a Polish person can easily work uh, out, of, uh, out of the borders, really. Um, so, you know, with that comes a slightly odd, uh, you know, advice that I can sort of give is like, be re become really good at English is my, is my first advice. Because, you know, all of documentation, whatever, whatever field you're in, uh, all of the documentation is going to be in English. And I know, I know a couple of you are like, hey, I'm, you know, I can read. That's fine. It's, uh, it's talking to other person that is, that is the issue. Then that is the portion of the English that you need to kind of master. Because sooner or later, you're going to, either you keep yourself within like the threshold of whatever you can find. And you know you you just deal with the situation as is, or there's like oh there's a new technology there's a new software and so on oh they they've written on a bug list that this doesn't work right now this doesn't work like now and so on and you have to communicate that with the team and and whatever and and so on your understanding and being able to communicate is going to be key so technically I'm not even saying English I'm saying communication right because sooner or later you're going to have to be able to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there are many studios right now that have a very good example of a work ethic where somebody can have a difference in, let's say, political opinions and still be able to work with each other. And that has to do with communication and knowing that, hey, I, I can sort of be professional there. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. You have a... Okay, uh, Nika, do you have any, uh, can you see their questions? Maybe we can have use some questions that people are asking. Uh, oh, also, it would be great to hear about junior producer PM positions. So the thing with, uh, you know, these, uh, these junior positions is that they're not necessarily, they're more than what their job title entails. Um, so as in junior in any field is uh, supposed to do, you know, supposed to show a little bit more, do a little bit more, work a little bit more, that type of thing. Um, and it really depends on where you are, right? So let's say you want to be uh, sort of Polish and... Uh, sort of Polish? Yeah, you want to be in Poland, I mean. Um, <laughs> you know, and that could, that, that would be very different from going to, let's say, an international um, game studio, right? Um, completely different vibe. Um, the level of, uh, level of jokes you're allowed to, to make is also very different. I would I would actually defer this specifically to to you in terms of like um, PM producer uh, advice and so on, because in general I, I he's an artist he doesn't like producers I think it's a I, I, I think I, it's a thing well so. the, let's say it like this I like I like it when I like it when people can actually when people finish work not produce work <laughs> okay like okay so yeah okay maybe talking. With an artist or producer, it's not a, not, not a good, not a good uh, I mean, I, I've done the manager stuff myself. It's just that it's not, it's not my field. Like, I, it's always tied to being able to create asset or art or something like this. So my, um, and this is, this is the, the type of advice I like to, you know, tell people. Like, 
don't overestimate the quality of what you do as the selling point of who you are. We have, we have met many people who were not that super great uh, at what they do, but they were so charming that it, you know, it, it they felt, could get away with it. Yeah, exactly. And it, it sort of felt painful. So, you know, I mean, it did feel painful because you, it's kind of like, hey, my friend, you haven't really done your job and now somebody else has to do it. Uh, what are you doing? And they're charming and you're know, laughing and, and doing all of this, you know, so it's, it's kind of hard to. Okay, so hey, like producers. Uh... No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so maybe we will finish that episode about <laughs> producers. <laughs> okay, so, people are also asking a lot of questions like, should they go and study when they are like, you know, the schools that teach you like, you know, bits and pieces from, uh, from the gaming industry? Mm. Very interesting question, actually, because um, let's say let's say it like this. Let's say that you're working on a time frame, and that is your life, right? And things take time to learn, right? So imagine that you're trying to learn something from somebody else. That means that that person has to already have kind of like internalized how you can teach it, right? So that is not at the forefront of high-end technology because high-end technology and graphics and testing and so on is basically just throwing whatever you can on the wall and see if it works. And if it doesn't, you start over again, right? You don't start with stipulating a class of how you teach things and do things like that. Now, this is very different from, let's say, um, programming where you can definitely study to uh, do machine learning, for instance. It's very, it's very, uh, a very logical process you know, how to do that and being able to access, let's say, uh, programming language that we call API. Um, you know, if every device has different things, you know, different languages. This is why Java was at one point very, you know, popular because it would unify everything. But, you know, those type of things are better. Like, uh, not, not to go into, let's say, a um, school that teaches you game development, but rather a school that teaches you how to, um, you know, like how to do databases, how to do, um, you know, like more proficient uh, optimized level of coding, maybe even low level uh, uh, coding where you're like working with shaders and so on. And then you take that and you can, you can apply it to your field. And this field uh, would be though, you know, you know, game development. So you would say more like specific courses and things like this yes. would be more useful. Yes, yes. Because, uh, tech, well, it, it's, it's kind of like this. You know, the school is kind of like a doctor, but you have a very specific problem that you need to solve, right? So in, instead of going to the doctor, you go and buy a bandage. And now you just bandage your elbow and you're done. You know, you didn't need to go through all of that, uh, that stuff. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that you have, an, uh, when it comes to schools and, and stuff like that, be very careful what you pick and be very, very picky. Like, like, why is this school better than this? Because it's in Krakow? Because it's in Warsaw? It, it, is it my laziness that is causing me to uh, use this school? You know, um, a good example is Animation Mentor, right? Animation Mentor uh, takes place in LA um, and they have a very different time zone. So that means that you have to wake up, um, I think five o'clock in the morning for one of their classes, you know? So you're making a lot of sacrifices there, right? It's not comfortable. It's just, you know, a better choice for you. Not that I'm advising animation mentor, by the way, but still like these are, these are sort of the options and so on. So really be picky and uh, look around because you don't have infinite amount of time. You have to kind of get it right uh, on the first go type of thing. Um, oh god, that's so memento mori type of thing. <laughs> well, like, no, if you, if, think yeah, about we are all true. gonna die. <laughs> well, it is true. It is true. But I mean, if, I, I mean, think about it this way: you're yeah. making a decision that will last you two years, right? So you don't want to make that into a mistake. Not only two years that you're making a decision that might be you. You might have the consequences for your entire life if you will go into this uh, career path. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, honestly, like if you wanted to relax and if you wanted to earn a lot of money at the same time, you know, like you can, you can become a lawyer, you can become like a doctor, more established type of things, you know, because those, the, that line, the pipeline from going from student to um, pensioner at some point uh, is much more clear with those established rules. Um, 
you let's say let's say um, I actually recommend uh, people looking to indie uh, you know positions rather than going into AAA right now because AAA doesn't have they didn't get their ass in gear uh, like indies did um, you know like I primarily I've been working from home from well, I've been working uh, with this uh, this studio, Black Amber, before it even established, and we've been working offsite. I, you know, technically, I've been working with them from home in four different countries. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I was still able to maintain that throughout the course of like let's say seven years. Um, you can't say that uh, the same same way about AAA, right? So it, you know, like what's more stable technically, you know. Um, so, you know, I, I, recommend, I recommend people like look into like indie development and so on, but it's not going to be the type of game development that you might be fond of. You might, because as, as a person who gets paid, you, you're getting paid to solve somebody else's problems, not, not, you know, further your own career. If you can further your own career at the same time, that's really great, but that's not really going to happen. They, they hired you to do something very specific and you're not really meant to do it any other way other than more efficient than they thought. That's really what they're looking for. Like, hey, uh, instead of one bucket at a time, I can carry two buckets at a time. Oh, awesome. Um, but be prepared to do a lot of hard work, I would say, as a, as a junior, uh, no matter where you are. Uh, I think Yuka was trying to ask something. Yeah. Uh, yes, because I have very short and I think it, it will be easy question. Sure. Uh, do we have a UX posi position in Polish game dev? Uh, and is it possible to uh, get a job as a UX uh, designer? Okay, so um, there is yes and no, because UX is a little bit more like um, software design level of things. And, uh, you know, not, not to speak from authority, but I was, you know, a uh, uh, program designer, uh, product designer uh, for Autodesk. And there was a little bit of UX uh, sort of that uh, involved there. But UX is technically, uh, use, you know, kind of like a user experience interface type of thing. What you're looking for in game dev is more like HUDs. Uh, you know, so that's that's slightly different from from UX, and there are a lot of uh, roles for for HUDs. The only problem is that, you know, it's the work is seasonal. Not every place is always looking for every role, right? If you go online right now, there isn't not every position imaginable is available for for Techland, the CDP Red, or People Can Fly, or something like that. When a project comes around, they're looking for very specific people. So uh, yes, there are work in UX. Uh, you can apply your skill sets in in game development. It's just that the work is very seasonal. Um, if you can open yourself up for international uh, work, then your your chances of finding something is much higher. Because I think it's like this with every position in game dev that it's seasonal, and you need to at some point you will probably need to relocate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, people well. Nowadays, I don't think that's the case. Okay, yeah, uh, home office. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's why that's why I'm you know I'm I'm sort of like the advice that I would give last year versus the advice I would give this year would be kind of different because I would say like, hey, go indie so you get a little bit of training, and then you can move on. That would be my advice. Or if you can, always try to land on AAA before you go whatever you know. Uh, because there's a lot of stigma, uh, you know, attached to it, right? So I have a friend um, who uh, is a Romanian friend who went to the UK, and um, he comes from uh, the mobile uh, game development, right? And he tried for ages to to get a job in AAA console gaming, and everybody looked down on him and said, like, hey. Uh, you know, you haven't worked professionally somewhere. This is mobile, yeah. you know, and it's not the same. These are not real games. Yeah, These are not, yeah exactly. Um, and you're going to have to deal with that a little bit as a UX designer who primarily worked from a different other field and so on. If you become a HUD designer, however, that's, that's, slightly, that's slightly different as well because you're meant to be able to master the graphics of, of the display of what's on screen. Um, user 
user experience designer is usually more like how does it feel to navigate, right? Like what's the fewest clicks I can do? Um, so it's slightly different, but you can definitely find a job in Poland. Yeah. So Poland. <laughs> yeah. Uh. In Poland also, we have UX yeah. designers. Yeah. Sure, and, sure. And, and, um, yeah. It's just that Poland is Not very every, small in yeah. terms of like the world. Yes, but uh, you need to uh, find it in a bigger company because small company, I think, uh, don't have UX designer uh, as a full uh, full time position. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, so why can't you do this freelance and like, hey, I, I you know, if you're really good at what you do, uh, maybe you can spend only, let's say, two months on a project and you can get your names on your CV on different pro uh, products over and over again. So instead of like somebody like me usually is, you know, on, on a single product for a year or two or something like that, as a freelancer, especially like somebody who who can fix and solve problems, you can create a name for yourself and a huge list of products that you worked on. The uh, fixer. Okay. What, uh, and what would you add, like, what would convince you, like, like somebody is applying to the company you are working at and mm -hmm. as a junior, what would convince you to hire this junior? What would you like to see in junior? Well, I know you guys have been talking about CVs a lot, you know? Yes. Um, you know, like there are a couple of things uh, that are positive and negative. Usually like it's um, the show reel kind of speaks for itself, right? Um, this becomes a little bit harder to do when you're a programmer. Um, you know, back when I was a student and uh, the programmers used to do their own, their own kind of applications and then like render a movie clip out of it. And they used to do like, uh, let's say like AI versus AI combat, like StarCraft, uh, looking type of thing and it was like miniatures running and, and doing that if like your your stuff is a presentation you are essentially a stand-up comedy act if you're not charming if you're uh, if you cannot show your best feet it doesn't it doesn't matter how well the text looks right so my uh, my advice is like um, you know focus on uh, focus on making your show reel look really good and also look at other people's show reels there are, you're gonna, it's going to be much easier to find other people's showreels than other people's CVs, for instance. And you can directly compare, especially if you see like, hey, there's an animator position open for whatever. And you can look at, you know, animation reels from 2020 and go like, <coughs> oh, shit, he's, he's, she is too good. I can't beat that. Oh, how, how do I do that? And you can improve and you go like, ah, I'm missing an acting piece here. I can't do this. So like, basically like put yourself in a the, some sort of race in a way and like compete with yourself against the others yes yes because if you don't put yourself in a race you what you're really saying is that i have natural talent that doesn't go away and doesn't need training and i don't believe that's true for anybody not not even for the genius level uh, people in, in game industry or, or otherwise. I think they're applying, to, uh, applying themselves. Those type of people are, are not afraid of failure because they have more failures than success, right? So that sounds like you're saying just work, work, work. I mean, how, are, how else are you going to... No, no, I'm like, uh, I mean, I'm not I, questioning yeah, that. I'm, 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 I'm also thinking that after a while you should contemplate on the type of work you've done, right? And this is why it's so hard and you, you can get easily fooled by, by colleges or like these institutes that want you to pay money mm -hmm. uh, to, to learn from them. But I, I think that's uh, all I have to say about that topic. Okay, so I have another question from Dominique. Uh, who is stronger candidate? Uh, a person who is shy and quiet, uh, but has a very good skill, uh, or pe person who is a uh, little less skilled, but a very extrovertic and uh, more people person, more, more community? Mm, that's, uh, that's a very good uh, question Depends nowadays. Depends from, from a position, I would say. Mm, 
I, no, not really. It is, it's, it's, uh, it's the situation because uh, let's, let's give a good example here. I'm an introvert. Magda is an extrovert, right? She hates working from home. I love working from home. <laughs> it's really you know, I can, I can keep up a good mood. I can be very professional and like to the point and so on because uh, the extrovertness working from home is actually horrible because you spend talking more than developing and achieving things, right? Because you love to talk, you love to mingle, you love to do this and do that. So um, just because you're shy doesn't mean that you are bad at communication. It's just that you're, you tend to avoid it a little bit. You try, tend to say like, ah, you know, that's, that's not what I want to do. And that's fine. But if you're shy as in like, I won't send this report, I won't talk to this person, I won't ask, you know, uh, questions when I need them to. And this is, this is the part that you yeah. have to understand because your, your manager is going to look at that and say, are there risks for this? Yeah, because I don't think it's about being shy. It's about mm. uh, communications mm. because uh, I believe that it's like, if you are shy and that's fine. Like if you're skilled, it doesn't affect that. The question is if, anything will happen will you be able to communicate and talk to uh, talk to people and talk to team like uh like in any uh, shape or form i i work with people that had problems with like live communication so they didn't want to speak at all but uh, they were professionals and they were really good at what they were doing and they were good with written communication so yes you could not come to them and talk to them and i was trying to remember about it because as uh, somebody mentioned i i am talkative and i was i was sometimes doing this mistake and coming to their desk and asking questions and they were like okay let's let's go and let's write about it because so it's all about like are you able to mm, have a professional communication about something so uh if, if you are uh, th then it's fine you just need to find a way to to communicate because if you are at that level if you're that shy that you cannot write an email you will be afraid to ask questions you will be afraid to say that there's something wrong with the project and that will jeopardize the project that's an issue i would say yeah so like the level of shyness we need to discuss that yeah exactly i mean there are not it's not good in either extremes right and yeah. that's something that you have to understand. It's kind of like a balance. If you're, um, if you're meant to be communicative and that is mainly your job, like let's say a marketeer or something like that, you're supposed to be like almost like on cocaine 24 seven and just like run, run, run. <laughs> hey, business, 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 shake hands, shake hands, Purell because you know, COVID. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'd say, I'd say like you have to, and, and, and company, um, company energy levels is going to be key. What you really want to do is like ascertain what energy level people are at, because if your company is kind of like, oh, hello, how are you doing? You know, you want to meet that and, and meet that energy level because you can't go in there. So going like, Hey pal, how are you doing? <laughs> Can I get hired? Please. <laughs> like, you, you can't, you can't do that. That's, that, that's, that was my personal <laughs> space. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> but, um, but if you're, if, but on the other hand, if the other, uh, if what, where you're going is, uh, you know, you're going like, oh, so tell me about your day. How, how was the trip here? And you go like, it was fine. You know, it's not going to work out because you're not meeting their energy level. And that's technically a test. You know, they're testing you. Hey, can you reciprocate what I'm, what I'm doing? Right. And that's what you really want to aim for. You can go to a shy company. That's easy. It's also like, I would say, department by department. As I said, like if your job is yeah. to be like outspoken a lot. Because like, for example, when I'm looking for the uh, translators on previous company, when I was looking for programmers, I didn't expect somebody to be like, you know, the superstar that will be dancing in front of everyone. Uh, I was looking for people that will be able to do their job. Like the, the social skills were like, secondary again communication is a different thing but uh, mm, but yes if you are looking for somebody to do the, the marketing or i don't know even the administration so it's a it's a bit different energy so it all depends. yes uh, in our companies like uh, marketing and, and hr are 
the most louder departments. I have no idea what you're talking about, or maybe I don't. I don't know too, but uh, <laughs> if you are uh, going... See, like, when, when we met three days ago, we couldn't stop talking till midnight, and we didn't realize it's midnight we're talking uh, uh, so much with Nika, because we were like, to HR guy, I was like, I'm very cold. Uh, I, I'll close this with saying um, something that I've uh, listened, uh, sorry, um, remembered from House, the TV series, where House uh, is the, the doctor who is grumpy and really rude, but he's a genius. So everybody comes to him, and uh, many seasons later, he explains why he chose be becoming a doctor. Uh, he, he was always this, you know, asshole person, even when he was younger, and then um, he basically said, like, I, I saw this man, this village doctor, and everybody hated him, except for when they needed him. And then I, and then I thought, oh, I want to be that person, the person that they cannot avoid. One. They cannot avoid when <laughs> they need because I so know something. <laughs> wow, that's like, <laughs> yeah, that's a reveal. <laughs> uh, so don't, there is no house, right? Uh, there is there is no, Hugh Laurie is really awesome as an actor, but that person does not exist and should not exist. You have to be very independent before you start burning bridges, like super independent. And I have made some mistakes myself that I regret. You cannot be this person. Avoid it. <laughs> yes, and uh, it's better to uh, not burning the bridges. Even well, if you are very uh, strong in your uh, position. I'm 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 f I'm very okay with burning the Crytek bridge, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you we, <laughs> maybe let's not draw the name. Okay, like, sure. Next like... question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. If, uh, the newest one. If someone has a good CV, good good portfolio, and pretty good work as a 2D artist, PowerPix artist um, experience, but the chance. Decide. But the chance or decide that he was not too extroverted, then what? I think that that's basically what we just covered. So like we we have Polish people here, Popolsku, Prussia. Oh, but then <laughs> somebody just asked... translated. Yeah, the, yeah, it was. Uh, but it was in English. So, uh, yeah, I know. The I chancellor. Know. Uh, okay. Uh, anyways, you like. Don't need to yell. They, they can hear you. Yeah. Like, really. Uh, like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill him after. Okay, you don't have to laugh as loud. I'm gonna kill you after. Hey, Sophie, it was nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like, you have to be extrovert if you want to be a salesperson, basically. If you want to be a telemarketer or if you want to, you know, promote products on the street and you want, and your wage depends on it, or you want to work in biz dev and you want to convince people to buy stuff from you, then you should be extrovert. I don't think it's that important in like the game developer position. The, the, the thing that I would actually like to recommend a lot of people um, is to do um, improv classes actually, when it comes to that. If you have this specific problem, this very specific problem where you know for a fact, and you cannot know, but let's say th that you do, that your skills are perfect. Your, um, your experience is perfect but they still don't hire you because of your not extrovertness, you know? Practice on that because sooner or later you're, you're, you're not making, even your, your products as in games are played by other people. You cannot go around not recognizing what people want, how they react to a question, how they react to a smile, a certain line, a dialogue, the wrong word, the right word. These are cues, social cues that you need to be able to pick up on. That's the fear of not hiring an extrovert, right? That they don't know this stuff. So again, uh, go and have a race with yourself and try to beat your weakest points. Well, you don't need. I'm trying to translate you, you from. I know, I know. Your you don't, you don't need to. Too. It's not. The, it's you're not. You're <laughs> not. Uh, I mean, I I know. I know the the whole uh, shtick with, uh, um, you know. Jordan Peterson that says like you have to you have to kind of defeat yourself day by day, but it's like it's not possible, it's not feasible, and he can't do it either. I'm, I'm not saying that you, you race against yourself. I'm saying you're challenging yourself 
uh, by by not only looking inwards but you're also looking outwards this is more something because in internal skills you can you can always build up you probably already built them up because you you know like me were on your computer when you were living with your mom and dad and you developed a little bit of a skill set then you kind of like and now you have to kind of like complement the exterior part of that how do i sell my animations how do i sell my vfx my 2d and stuff like that um okay yeah so ne next question what type of show reel should uh, i have uh, as a junior developer own game or something like that again sorry what type of show reel should have junior developer uh, own game or something like that i would say probably game like game jams right like what do you think like about the project that should game be in the own work n not especially own a game because it's it's like yeah. a project it's hard to make your own game when you're a junior like it's a bit complicated I would, but all the all the gems when they are you can actually create something that's gems are horrible gems, ah! are gems and, and the problem the problem with gems are like you need to have <laughs> you need to have like pre-existing level of knowledges to be able to like smash that in a very short amount of time to produce something. So this is something that I learned uh, from my school and so on. And that was, you know, with teachers that had a background in actual uh, working in, in 3D and, and so on. Um, and uh, basically they, uh, they, they said that if you have something that you're, you're not super, it doesn't look great but you say like, this is a 10 second drawing, right? I made this drawing in 10 seconds. Well, is it impressive without saying it's 10 seconds? Because if it's not, then don't do it. And it's the same thing with games. It's same thing with what you have on your showreel. You want to show that you can hit a quality level, not a speed level. Yeah, but when you are going for uh, game games, you're uh, learning how to work uh, efficiently and even if when you're not going to show things from your first game jam because probably you should not like yeah, yeah. after a few of them I agree on that I, I I agree on that but don't go to game game jams uh expecting to find material for your show reel probably you should avoid it okay so what do you, what do you should have in your show reel that's the question well go to reddit look at the unreal game development i just saw today there was this amazing uh looking game where there's a crab with a shotgun running mm -hmm. around shooting things and, and stuff like that. That looks amazing, looks fun and so on. I can't imagine that it took super amount of time to do that, but it looks better than I've seen in most games I've seen on the game jam. Okay. Yeah. Question, how long should the uh, demo reel uh, be the example like for an anime? Painfully short <laughs> to the point, to the point where it starts hurting yourself going like, ah, am I, is this really okay? Like, ah, this is so short. Uh, if find something that you can reduce and reduce it, right? Kill your darlings here. This is an old marketing slang for essentially like, hey, you might have a baby that you invested a lot of time and energy in, but if it doesn't fit the product or it doesn't fit what you want to present, you have to kill your darlings, you know? You have to beat yourself over and over and say like, this is good, but I know that I'm proud of this, but this is the, the stuff that other people want to see. Could you define it in time, painfully short? Painfully short, okay. Um, a minute, a minute and a half. Um, if you have more, split them up. Say like, hey, I, I, you know, I've accumulated a lot of material over the years, right? So I have, I can say that this is my latest stuff. This is from 2020. This is my gameplay stuff. And that could be various games that I've cobbled together. And it's like in games, not rendered in Maya or whatever other app. Um, and this is my acting stuff. Like here's me like talking and acting and doing stuff like that. You, what, you sh what you should do is like, you, you can give a lot of material, but you need to give them in bite sizes and you need to start with your strongest material first, right? So keep that to like a minute and a half uh, not more than three minutes. Think of it like a song, right? Like a radio song. It it <laughs> should be fairly short. Yeah, if it's ten minutes, you're gonna somebody's gonna cry. Yeah, or you can uh, or you can make it long, like Symphony X, The Odyssey, which is twenty minutes long. 
Uh, and sometimes people are forcing uh, their girlfriends to listen to it. Yes. So imagine that. Imagine you're forcing somebody to, uh, or worse, they're skipping fast forwarding through your showreel. You don't want that effect, right? Yeah. Uh, Jesus, you reminded me that song now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was painfully long, I have to admit. How to deal with the situation? Uh, you are told that uh, the position you are applying uh, to is meet, but when it comes to sign a contract, uh, it's for senior, uh, and you are aware that you are don't have a skill for that. Well, um, there is this imposter syndrome thing, right? So, like, really good people sometimes look at themselves and say, like, "Oh shit, I what am I doing? I don't belong here. I I'm not." I'm not qualified enough. And if you don't have those feelings, you're probably in the wrong place. So you should always look at, um, you know, higher positions and stuff like that as a challenge. But the problem is like whoever is hiring you might have different type of uh, criteria to do so, right? Um, so, you know, like if you're, if you're a senior, the biggest problem with uh, jumping from mid to senior is that uh, usually you need uh, you need experience handling uh, juniors, right? That's really the criteria I have for a senior. Like, can your skills be teachable to another person, right? Can you start, because a senior is like one step away from a lead, technically. You should be able to promote a senior to a lead. So the senior better have a little bit of those type of qualities and so on. And those qualities might not be uh, that, that, that's probably more soft skills than it's hard skills. I've, I've met yeah. a lot of mid-level people that are way better animators than seniors, but, you know, they are, you know, loose cannons. They, uh, they don't know how to handle themselves. Anyways, let's go to the next question. Okay. Mm, what? to do if I don't know what I want to do specific in game dev and I think I can be good in a few fields like game design, level design, narrative design, uh, develop them all equally uh, or try to focus on one and put the most of my efforts uh, on it. What do you recommend? Well, um, there, is a, there is a sense of uh, enjoyment to be in a, gen a generalist. And there is a uh, sense of being trapped when you become a specialist. So there is a plus side and a downside to that. You have to kind of discover that by yourself. I would say that um, if a generalist usually gets less money, um, a specialist uh, gets more money, but the generalist has an easier time finding things, fixing things, and a specialist will at some point say, that's not my problem. Right? A generalist won't do that. He says, like, I will find a way to fix this. Both are good, both are bad. They have their plus and minuses. So this is more of a question to, this, to, the, question, uh, to the person uh, writing the questions. Um, you, you know, like, maybe you, maybe you need more time to find out. Maybe being a generalist is just fine for you. Okay. Next question. Oh, you have a horrible mouse. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but you have other nice body parts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Have you <laughs> with the position of technical art artist, uh, what the, uh, does his work look like in your experience? So technical artist is the, um, what I would normally say is the, um, it's the in-between uh, between being a full-on programmer and uh, being an artist, right? So basically what you're trying to do is, uh, most of the time what you, what you do is like you create tools for the artist to, to cre uh, create their art then, and then you're responsible for bringing that into the games engine and being able to display that correctly with deformations and other types of effects and so on. Your work will vary a lot. Let's say that you don't have experience with um, in-house game engines. So it's Unreal and Unity most, most of the times. So as a technical artist, you might be, um, you know, asked to do like particle effects, for instance. And then you say like, that's not me. That's a VFX artist. 
And they say like, yeah, but you need to be able to generate and set that up. And then they come in with the graphics. We're like, fine, I'll, I'll set that up. Uh, as a technical artist, um, you're probably uh, meant to, um, it's, it's really hard because, you know, like I'm, I'm doing a lot of these type of jobs and it's very different from product to product, right? I can't say, you know, if I were to say everything I've ever done, that wouldn't even be true, right? Because you might not actually encounter that, especially not on your first job. Um, but, but I would say that uh, you're meant to be able to take, uh, transform assets, uh, be able to mass produce certain things, um, be able to set up a, a sort of a pipeline that uh, works with the artist and so on. Um, and generally try to fix, uh, fix problems left or right. You're probably, um, as, a, as a technical artist, you, uh, in, as, as, especially in the beginning, you're probably more on a blueprint level, I would say, in Unreal, than going in and, and actually coding yourself. Whereas in Unity, you're obviously coding from the get-go. Um, so, you know, like there are various different levels of how, how much you do and what you don't do. So it depends from the engine and it depends probably from company, company size, yeah. if it's indie or AAA yeah. or... If you're a, a five-man team, you're basically all generalist with a little bit of a, a specialization, something that you love to do and you put more energy and time on, onto it. Okay, let's, let's see. Ah, sorry, I'm trying to move the questions, but... Uh, uh, should Sorry, I write? Go ahead. Go ahead. Move. Okay. Uh, it will be different questions. Should I write the cover letter? No. <laughs> <laughs> if if somebody asks for what? if somebody asks for a cover letter, they're um, they're probably super old. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I am super old. Okay. I mean, like yeah, when if, I'm looking for a translator. If they require it. If, if they, I'm yeah. If I'm looking for a translator, I would like to see at least a sample how the person is writing. So I would say it depends from the position because that shows your writings. It doesn't have to be a cover letter. It, it can be something in the email, but you should write something for some of the position. Not as a programmer, not as an artist. Yes, but like in some cases, I think you should write something. And so that's, a, so yeah, it depends from the position. Depends from the position, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a waste of your time, honestly. <laughs> Uh, could you please uh, say a couple words uh, about how to the artist job uh, at the studio might look like? Uh, what they are usually responsible for? So usually uh, when you come in the first day, they handcuff you to the desk <laughs> and they force you to work 12 hours. No, um, <laughs> but honestly, that's, that's such a general question. Uh, well, I can't give a, a very specific answer because let's say like uh, in some studios, you're meant to do like eight animations per day. And I'm not meaning like you made eight animations work in progress, like you finished eight animations per day. Um, and this might happen with like game studios that do like open world and so on. They have so many different characters. Uh, other... Other people are going like, uh, well, let's say you are um, a matte painter or, you know, concept artist. You go like, oh, we need that this broad matte painting going like, hey, I want you to travel to this con uh, country and look at the environments and get some inspirations. That might happen, you know, or you can be handcuffed to your desk, you know. Um, so it depends from the company. That's again, what you're trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, any suggestion how to change position from senior Android dev to Unity dev without losing the most par, uh, part of the salary? Currently, Unity sk skills is junior plus. Then you're a junior plus. It's... And you will get junior plus salary. Look, what you're, what you're probably looking for more is um, uh, kind of like a build engineer. Like, hey, I, I'm a specialist at uh, making sure that your stuff is running on Android especially like the high level new, new stuff uh, that, uh, that's getting into Android nowadays. Um, so that, that might be something that you are able to sell as a, as a skill set, right? But you, you cannot say that, hey, I'm a Unity developer because that's not true. You are like- So you need to learn more. Yeah. You know, like I had, um, I had a, uh, actually it was a matte painter <laughs> a friend uh, by the name of uh, Luke Kelly 
and he was a matte painter in LA for like five years or so on. And then he decided to become an animator and he was earning a shit ton. And then he decided this is not for me. And he took a junior position in, uh, in England again to just start in a sort of in a different field and so on. It is a different field. Like I would be an amateur, whatever, you know, like I, it's, not, it's not something I practice on. So why would anybody hire me for the same amount of money as somebody that can do the job faster, better, with less errors? It doesn't matter how good you are with your hands. Uh, you have no proven track record that you can do it. As you guys can hear, Sahil is not sugarcoating it. And <laughs> hey, nobody's going to hire me to be an astronaut, even if I would love that work. Yeah. <laughs> He's making a successful adventure uh, in uh, immersive game in a two man team. Good reason to get hired. I would say it depends from the game. <laughs> okay, so. Show um, us the game. Show us. <laughs> I don't think you were able to get hired anywhere if you made goat simulator um that's a really good selling yeah. game and funny one i know i know uh, but you won't be able to get hired as i mean you won't be able to get hired as hideo kojima as well you know like if you're if you're showing yourself that you're like super eccentric in a way you're not going to get hired and so on but if you if you treat your uh successful game and you remove the successful part of it and you make it into a tech demo instead. It doesn't matter how many uh, people you were, that were in your team. The successful part doesn't even matter because you can show off the good stuff uh, tech, on a technical level, what your game achieved. If, you are, if you're looking for success as a selling point, you're probably better off as a YouTuber. <laughs> okay, so you need, okay, okay. As a, as a game, uh, Magic, do we still have some time or? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, don't ask him. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, let, let's say the last one. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, so now it's a lot of last ones showing up. Uh, okay. So it was as a game a developer employee, uh, do you have access to other uh, departments? For example, uh, could you see the music, sounds producer work or animators uh, and so on? Usually what you, uh, what you try to do is like uh, compile everything into a build uh, and how that looks is like you, uh, everybody throws their stuff into a stack essentially like a folder and then you know, people can look at what's inside that folder. Usually um, like in Unreal or something like that, you have a level and then you have sub levels and everybody goes in and populates that with different things. The I main idea is that somebody, anybody in the team can uh, download uh, the the project uh press start and be able to play the game because in usually smaller teams don't have qa so you're very reliant on other people looking at your stuff so yes i would say just the last last one because i think that's the one so i would like to answer how to deal with the feeling that uh, that your work environment art is bad i mean the other people says wow it's good but you still think uh, mm. think well i can improve uh, this and that any tips please because i know that you like this topic yeah i had this uh, <laughs> we actually had this conversation yesterday um <laughs> where i said uh, me and another guy that w uh, worked at crytech and we joined that uh, a year in between us but then he was in the animation team and so on and he also went to school to study animations and um, after a year or so, you know, we, we talked a bit and he said like, oh, I feel like I'm losing my skill set. I, I feel like I'm becoming worse at what I do uh, and I can do better. I can like uh, fix things, but no, none of that is required of me. They want to do it their way. They want to do it uh, so on and so forth. The, the first thing that you have to uh, recognize is that when you're in a bigger team, um, like a huge team, 500 people type of thing, and the, you get this type of treatment, that's probably the time to start looking at other places because you're starting to become the big fish in a small pond uh, and you need to challenge yourself a little bit more. On the other hand, if you're in a small team, they're not experts. I show something to Magda, she has no idea what she's looking at. And I have to point out on the screen, look at this, what do you think about this? She's not an expert, she doesn't know, you know? So take that with a grain of salt. But uh, also, I've never pushed myself 
really at work. I've always pu uh, pushed myself um, doing my own private uh, stuff away from work. That's when I challenge myself. At work, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be nice and I'll fix this and do that. So maybe find a challenge. So there are many answers to these questions, really. Because I also think that uh, when the, the time comes that you will see your work and you'll see, okay, it's perfect. There's nothing I can fix that I'm the best. I think that's the moment we, sh we should be worried, actually. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> if you feel like there's nothing extra you can do, that's, uh, yeah, that's yeah, a warning like, signal. Yeah, that's, that's the bad. I, I think the, the moment when you think that you can do better, that's the moment when you still want to improve and you want to work on your skills. And then that's, that's actually the good thing. Yeah. If you're happy as an artist, you're probably not an artist. <laughs> <laughs> Look what it is to me. It is perfect ending of this presentation. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I can go in a very long conversation with that. Like, hey, you need to keep up your mentality. But I feel like a lot of people start to understand more about uh, mental health during COVID. So I don't need to be the expert saying, telling you this. So the thing, so the thing with the uh, uh, sort of like sound design and uh, and so on, especially when it comes to uh, you know different different studios, is that it's usually like something that happens at the very end, right? You made your game and everything like that, and then it sort of like uh, adds in in sort of the the problem is it's it's a very it's a very tight market. It's actually a smaller community than you think. Um, the sound designers for, for movies and film and, and so on, for instance, they all kind of know each other. There isn't really an unknown person. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some unknown skill sets and so on. So uh, when you approach people, um, you know, from different branches and so on, you can either do it as a solicitor, uh, um, you know, or you can, you can sort of, uh, you know, uh, go into like these conventions and say like, hey, this is my uh this like uh, we saw this guy with the cv that had like uh the cv had an embedded chip in it so you can listen to his sound because he didn't have any other ways to dis to showcase yeah, yeah. what he was good at and so on and um and that's kind of like what you have to do you have to kind of like think outside the box a little bit um even smaller studios outsource right they're more happy to give it to a bigger studio that has like several people working rather than a singular person and so on. So maybe you can also hide that. Maybe you can actually say, oh, my name is uh, whatever, but I work for this company. It's actually you, you're the owner. <laughs> that, could, that could sort of also work. Um, it's very hard to find junior positions and most job offers are for lead designers. Yeah, so um, I, this is my advice to, uh, to everybody. Prepare. Is it another last question? No, 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 it's from the same one. The same one. Prepare, always, no. always prepare to become a lead. Always prepare to uh, start making decisions that might affect uh, the product and, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Your, your, your title might be junior, but you're not meant to, um, you know, put in like something that is. Yeah, I, th I think what, what she was asking, like, because it's hard, like, it's hard to get a job as a junior when they are yeah. expecting triple a experience so i know i know uh, i know yeah. and it's also hard to become uh, get paid as a jazz musician what's 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 the point there are no jobs for juniors don't uh, like practice so you are not considered a junior anymore it's the job market so freelance 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 um in other projects or you know, there are like there was another question here as well, like uh, mods, and I answered yes. You know, like hey, join join a mod group, work for free. Say hey, I can add sounds to your uh, your project. What do you think? And then you suddenly you have a show reel, and you say like I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've worked with other people. I might be able to be considered a lead. You know, I might have that skill set. So, you know, if you don't find work, uh, create make work, make work for yourself. And then when their positions are actually open that you actually want, you can apply. But there is there is no way for me to tell other companies to hey hey don't seek for <laughs> lead positions, seek for juniors only. I don't have that power, and neither does she. Uh, the question uh, questioner. So uh, practice. If there is no openings, just practice. 